Thank you for being here today to remember the life of Alex Fuller, to support his family in this time of grief, and to remember his legacy and the gift that he is from the Lord. Let's open with the word of prayer. Father, we come to you now in faith that in pain, you are still there. We come to you now asking that you will lift our eyes in these moments to your promises, to your character, that you will remind us of the vibrant gift of joy that we knew in Alex. And in these moments, we are asking, Father, for you to do a work of mending and healing hearts. Father, we are here believing that this is not the end, but that Christ has overcome the grave, and in that we have hope in this grief. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Alex Paulson Bullard, 27, of Odell, Illinois, passed away on Thursday, June 10th, 2021, in Cornell, Illinois, from an auto accident. He was born October 10th, 1993, in Streeter, Illinois, to Paul and Charlene Paulson Bullard. He married Kelly Polalis on June 22nd, 2018, in Princeton, Illinois. He leaves behind his wife, Kelly, his two-year-old daughter, Hallie, and his seven-week-old son, Crew. His parents, Paul and Charlene Bullard of Cornell, one sister, Melinda, and her husband, Reggie Roth of Gridley, Illinois, one brother, Matthew, and his wife, Danielle Vanderveen of Flanagan, Illinois, grandparents, Roger and Joanne Paulson of Emerson, Nebraska, and Edna Bolwag of Wheaton, Illinois, and nieces and nephews, Jude, McKenna, Bailey, Reese, Ty, Grayson, Ruth, Brooks, William, and Hudson. He was preceded in death by his paternal grandparents, Robert and Sharon Bullard, and his uncle, Scott. Alex graduated in 2017 from Illinois State University with a bachelor's degree in agricultural business. After graduation, he became the farm manager and lead herdsman of Bullard Cattle, Cattle Company, which included every job imaginable. He was a passionate and successful person in everything he did. Alex was active in 4-H and FFA. He was a competitive athlete throughout his school years and played collegiate level baseball. Many of his coaches left a lasting impression on him. Alex was active with the Simital and Charlet breeds within the cattle industry. Alex had many hobbies and loved anything with a motor and a steering wheel. His highest love and passion were for his family. He will be greatly missed. There are moments in this life and in this world that are devastating, that are so hard that they, they numb you, and it doesn't even seem real. And last Thursday night was one of those moments when Kelly stood at the scene of the accident. She played on her, on her phone the song Waymaker. And there's a line that's repeated in this song that says, God is a promise keeper, light in the darkness. And one of our purposes in gathering here today is to remember that even in this darkness, his promises stand. 
And so I'm going to invite everyone to support Kelly and the Bullard family and stand, and we're going to sing Waymaker together, if you're able to, uh, just to stand with her and remember God's truth. So go ahead and stand, and the lyrics will be behind me on the screen. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Way make miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way make miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. Miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. We make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. 
I want to start by thanking everyone for being here today, and I want to thank Alex's entire family for giving me the honor to stand up here and speak to you all of my greatest friend. Paul, Charlene, Matt, Melinda, thank you guys for raising such an incredible young man that we were all so fortunate to know. And Kelly, I want to thank you for showing Alex how incredible love and life could be. To see you two together is to know what tr love truly is. And thank you for gifting him with two amazing babies that brought him more joy into his life than anything else ever had before. The first thing I think about when I think of Alex is his passion that he always had. He had an energy about him when he was doing the things that he loved that you couldn't help but admire. When he was younger, his passion was for competing I think we all know that. He was a pretty fierce competitor. <clears throat> in anything and everything, he excelled at whatever he put his mind into. In his adult life, his passion was his family. And whether it was giving his attention and love to his children or listening to him as you helped him on the farm, you could feel his love for everything that he did. You could see his passion for life and the way he talked about his love for Kelly and all the plans that they had for their future. And to be able to see him with his beautiful children and interact with them and to see how much joy they brought him is a memory I'll forever cherish. I only wish he could have had more time to see them grow because he, he deserved that. If you were fortunate enough to know Alex, then you knew the one-of-a-kind charisma that he possessed. Alex was the type of person that could walk into any room, anywhere, with any kind of crowd, and you can guarantee that he was going to leave that occasion with more friends than he walked in with. Alex didn't just talk to you. Alex would connect with you. Once again, his passion comes to mind. And he could kind of develop that same passion. And he would connect it to what you felt passionate about. He made everyone feel comfortable. He loved to make people laugh. He could genuinely always put a smile on your face. And it seemed like every time Alex went somewhere, he would run into someone he knew from the past and without fail, it would turn into a real, meaningful conversation. His ability to converse and connect with people was one of the most special things about Alex and something that I think everyone who ever knew him would hold on to and remember fondly. The thing I admire most about Alex was that he was a thinker and he was a dreamer. He always had some kind of task on his mind as long as I knew him whether it was a boat, a four-wheeler, an old dune buggy, something going on with his old Escort that we all loved riding in more than any other vehicle. Recently, he had told me things that he wanted in his house, like a skylight in his house so he could look at the stars with his family, or a zip line he wanted to run from his house all the way to his pond, which if you've never seen their property, would be pretty, pretty long, or the diving board he wanted to put in the pond for Hallie to jump off of. He loved to talk about a strategy for the cattle operation or the big, beautiful kitchen he had planned to build for Kelly. In recent years, our conversations often at some point or another moved on to some sort of philosophical discussion on things that he had been thinking. He loved to ask me what I thought the meaning of our existence here was, or what I thought our purpose in life should be. We would go back and forth, and he would say one thing, and I would poke a hole in it, and then he would do the same to me. And we never really settled on an answer together, but Alex, I think I've got your answer now. Your purpose here on this earth was to have such an impact like the one you have had and the one you will continue to have. I ask that we all try to live a little like Alex did. Show passion in the things you love, love your family and friends fiercely, and be strong like he was in life. And as long as we do this, a part of Alex will live forever in all of us. Thank you.
Thank you, Andrew. There are no words that can fully and adequately address the reason we're here today. Words, our words right now feel simplistic and not enough, and they are. But God's word does give us something. It does give us some words, like a handle to hold on to in turbulence. The scriptures give us truth to stand on. As I thought about Alex's passing this past week, I was reminded of the Old Testament book of Ruth. The beginning of Ruth, we meet a woman named Naomi. And three verses into that book, Naomi loses her husband. And in the next verse, she loses her sons. Kelly and Charlene and Paul, very few people in this room today have ever experienced anything that you're going through. Naomi felt that. She sat where you sit. She felt what you feel. And later in the book of Ruth, when she moves to a new town, she says, don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara. The name Mara means bitter. She said, the Lord has made me empty. And I'm bitter. It's honest. Naomi hated what she went through. All she saw was darkness and heartache. She didn't know what to do or how to move forward, as you feel. When there's suffering of this magnitude, there is no script. There is no, this is what to do now. This is what to do next. And God's word shows us that we don't have to be stoic. We don't have to be strong. We don't have to deny the reality of how bad this hurts. That we can say, I am empty. I am devastated. Our grief is acknowledgement of God's gift of a beautiful man. And Alex was a gift. His personality, as Andrew just shared, was magnetic. He had big ideas big plans. I don't think a day ever went by that he didn't have a new big idea. (laughs) He had charisma. Paul, you said the other day, Alex could sell you a furnace in 100 degree heat. (laughs) And that's the truth. Melinda, you said it so well, that Alex was generous with his love. Not many brothers, young or old, stand up when their sister walks into the room and give them a giant hug and a kiss on the head. It's generous with his love. Alex was a hugger. Charlene said it the other day, and I've actually heard it several times since. He was the best hugger. He's this big, strapping, athletic cattle guy, and he just hugs everybody. Even if he didn't know you, he'd hug you. But of course, there weren't many people that Alex didn't know. (laughs) He was the guy that if he walked in a room 10 minutes later, he knew half of the room. At a cattle show, he would be talking to little preschoolers one minute, teaching them about the cows, and then an 80-year-old rancher the next minute. He loved people, and he made you feel loved. Margie shared the story that Uh, Before Alex and Kelly were even married, it was a a hard time in the family, and Alex just stood there in the living room and hugged you for a long time and didn't say any words, but that hug was worth an hour of conversation. And Angelo, I I loved how you shared how your son-in-law made you feel so wanted and loved. I love the story that you'd say, hey, let's come out on the deck and have a cigar. And Alex didn't even like cigars, but you'd hand him one and it'd take him 10 tries to light it and he didn't really know what to do with it. But he loved you. And that's why he was out on the deck. Paul, I love that your adult son 
went around and bragged about how his dad was the smartest guy that could fix everything. Matt, all those text threads of business ventures and motorized items that you should buy <laughs> probably drove you crazy, but now are a testimony of relationship with your brother. And of course, Kelly, he adored you. He adored you. I got the jo joy of really getting to know Alex and Kelly in premarital counseling three and a half or so years ago. And right away, I knew that Alex was a guy that was all in on everything. And he was all in on Kelly Palalis. <laughs> he adored you. Your mom said he treated you like a queen. And he did. Of course, that was until Hallie came along. And then you had to share that love. <laughs> And, man, he loved his daughter. And just seeing the pictures on the screen of Hallie on his shoulders or Hallie in the ranger or Hallie with the cows, his family was his joy and his prize and his delight. I, I can envision preaching from this pulpit, standing right here and seeing this big hulking guy right in the back by those doors with Hallie when she was a little baby during the sermon. Bouncing her around. And how excited he was to have crew two weeks ago in the lobby right there as he held crew. He said, I can't wait to get a baseball in his hand. And he would have been teaching him how to throw a slider at two years old, I'm sure. <laughs> Kelly, you said on Saturday, he loved people so hard. And that's well said. He loved you. He loved his children more than they will ever know. We've, we've lost a vibrant, generous, loving friend, father, son, brother, and husband, and the pain feels bitter and empty. And so like Naomi, we say, I feel empty. But as honest as scripture is with the pain of grief, God's word gives us Glimpses of hope. One of those glimpses is in the book of Lamentations. Lamentation is a book of sorrow, a book written that's a lament. The author of Lamentations says things like, I am a man who has seen affliction. I am a man who dwells in darkness. I am filled with bitterness. My soul is without peace. But then right in the middle of this, this book about suffering, he writes this, Yet... This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Kelly, on Friday morning, when we were in your living room trying to wrap our minds around what had just even happened, you said something that was profound. You said, I need people to pray for me to remember God's promises. And that's what this moment is for. For just a moment to look up and to remember that your God is faithful. Great is his faithfulness to you. The author of Lamentations, in the middle of his despair, and said, I don't understand, writes that word, yet. Yet, yet, this I call to mind. My God's love is steadfast. His mercies are new every day, and his faithfulness is great. It's just that one small statement that is faith. To say, yet, in the darkness, to say, yet, my God is still the king on the throne of heaven. Yet, he will be faithful. Yet, I am not abandoned. Yet, I believe he knows what I don't know. Yet, I believe that as sad and mad and confused as I am, that he is still good. In scripture, the reliability of God's promises is often tied to the sunrise, and here it is. His mercies are new every morning. Every time the sun rises, God is shouting, 
I am still faithful. I will not forsake or abandon you. Kelly, our whole church family is praying and will be praying for you and for your whole family just to say that word yet. Yet, as Hebrews says, he will never leave or forsake me. Yet, as Psalm 46 says, he is my refuge and my help. Yet, as Psalm 68 says, he is a father to the fatherless. Yet, as Lamentation says, he is my portion, he is enough. Yet, as Isaiah says, he is my redeemer who brings beauty from ashes. That is faith. We're praying that your whole family can say, yet, great is thy faithfulness. Naomi was bitter and empty, and yet, at the end of the book of Ruth, she says, my joy has been restored, and God gave her a grandson who is the father of Jesse, who is the father of David, who is in the line of Christ. That in the darkness, God was working out a plan of redemption not only for Naomi, but for the whole world. That through Naomi's line, the one would come who would say, in this world you will have trouble, but I have overcome the world. That through Naomi's line, the one would come who would say, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who lives and believes in me will, will never die. The one who comes into this world as light in the darkness, Jesus the Christ, and that is why we have hope in this moment. Alex sat in this room and sang this news about the gospel of hope, about Jesus Christ. The one who at the very end of the story in Revelation 21, we get a small glimpse, will return to this world as conqueror. He has conquered sin on the cross. He has conquered the grave through his resurrection. And Revelation 21 says, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. This is our hope in the darkness. that Christ has conquered the grave and the day is coming when he will wipe every tear away. We have lost a vibrant, generous, loving, beautiful, humorous, joyful friend and man. Yet, we believe there is one who has conquered the grave. Amen. We're now going to hear the song Rescue. This is a song that was sung here at our church a few years ago, and Alex loved it. He and Kelly would turn it on in the car and sing it on the way home. It would be throughout their house. And it is the song that talks about God's light coming into the dark world. You are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless You have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper Underneath your breath I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true, I will rescue you. There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. 
I'll be your shelter, I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. to reach you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true, I will rescue you. I hear the whisper underneath your breath. I hear you whisper, you have nothing left. to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight. It's true, I will rescue you. Oh, I will rescue you. I'd like to invite everyone to join us for burial services at the Cornell Cemetery and then to the Cornell Firehouse for lunch after that. Let's conclude with a word of prayer. Father, we look to you. We look to your promises. And we trust. Great is thy faithfulness. We trust that you are the shepherd who will lead. We trust you are the king on the throne. We trust the day is coming when you wipe away tears. We trust in hope, for Christ has conquered the grave. And we ask together that you will guard and protect and remind and encourage this family in the days ahead. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.